Go. You now may leave, lady. Do I have to? Do I have to say got it? Got it. Do I have to say that on the computer? <laughs> Stand by. Audio in three, two, one. Wow, that was music, was it not? Welcome to Mr. Restaurant, season two, episode four. I am pleased today to have Susan Feniger and Liz Lachman. Is it Lachman or Lachman? It is Lachman. It's Thank Lachman. You. And today's uh, topic is really about resilience in the restaurant industry. And we'll be getting into that in a bit, uh, primarily through a documentary, a verite documentary that uh, Liz has been uh, working on uh, for some time. And, uh, but primarily, I, I want to tell you a little bit about Susan and Liz. And Susan is, is really unique in many, many ways because she's a great person to begin with. But other than that, she's an American chef. She's a restaurateur. She's a cookbook author. She's a radio and TV personality. And uh, she starred in cooking shows, uh, Two Hot Tamales. She's been featured on Iron Chef, uh, Top Chef Masters, Cooking with the Master Chefs. Uh, for 40 years, she's, she's literally traveled the world to bring food back to LA and others around the world. And primarily the restaurants that she has been incorporated with, associated with rather, uh, in LA is the Border Grill, City, Ciudad, Street, and Socolo. Um, she's received a Lifetime Achievement Award from the California Restaurant Association. Uh, she's received the LA Times Jonathan Gold Award. Oh, I'm gushing. Um, but recently she was awarded the Julia Child Award, honoring an individual who has made a profound and significant difference in the way America cooks and eats and drinks. And she was recently inducted into the permanent collection of the food exhibition at the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. And I'm exhausted already telling you. About <laughs> I can leave now because apparently. No, no, no. Stick around. Stick around. <laughs> we're, gonna talk, drop. we're gonna talk about Liz Lachman <laughs> right now because Lick Lock Liz Lachman, let me tell you, is another award winner. I'm around these award winners, but her real deal is that she was an Emmy Award winning musician and composer. She's a Golden Reel Award winning music editor. She's a BMI TV Music Award winner. She's an award winning filmmaker and a screenwriter. And they're both accomplished. And I feel like walking out the door right now from the grotto. I, this is, I'm rather, intimid I'm intimidated. We need but, you. But we're really here to talk about Liz's latest project, which is called Susan Feniger. Dot four. It's it's a it's a documentary, is it not, Liz? It is, and it's it, a it documentary, and it basically uh, follows Susan's first solo restaurant venture, Street. Yes, right? yeah, and absolutely. and well, it's a story. Was, it's a story yeah. about starting over and resilience after failing. Is that right? Well, I would say it's definitely a story about reinvention. Reinvention, okay. absolutely. Okay. You know, Susan was doing her own restaurant for the first time without her longtime partner, Mary Sue Milliken. And uh, so there was a lot of um, uh, new things that, that she had never done alone. And also, she, we, because she couldn't use the shared staff they had built and she couldn't use their shared kitchens from their restaurants together, because this was her own project, um, she did everything from our house. So that became a big, oh yeah, I like to call oh, it a big your house. house. Your yeah, food. our house. Everything, the rest, all, all the recipes were tested. All of the, all the things that one might do at an office or at in the kitchen were done from the home. So the the wine deliveries, the glasses, and everything that got delivered, and it was all in the house. And I thought, you know, this is interesting because she's at the top of her career. She's done everything, and yet she has to start over to do this particular uh, restaurant. And I thought it was interesting. I said, somebody should record this. I, I didn't mean me. 
But well, I, I, I you are there. you are her partner in many ways, correct? Your yeah. life partner, and Mary Sue was her business partner, right? So that must have been a bit of a jumble initially when you said, "Let's go do something solo, Susan." So how how did that affect Mary Sue or even Liz? Because you're kind of caught in the middle. You've got two relationships going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think, you know, Mary Sue and I have been business partners now 40 plus years. Liz and I have been together 27. I was 12 when we met. So, <laughs> so. Uh, wait, wait a second. And, so how did you how did you and Mary Sue get together initially? Uh, we we worked uh, we met each other in Chicago working at La Parroquet. So Mary Sue had been there for, I think, maybe three, four months. And she was the first woman in that kitchen. And then I came along and the owner, Jovan Trebojevic, was like, wow. Could you repeat that again? <laughs> Jovan. Move on. He, uh, he thought, wow, I never had such a great deal with, you know, I never thought women could work in kitchens. And uh, so he- Other hired, than at home. Yeah, other than at home, Bare, exactly. Barefoot and pregnant. And that was, this was late seventies that we were working there and we met there. And at some point, probably after a year or so, when the chef went on vacation, Mary Sue and I ended up running the kitchen for those two weeks. So it was really a big turnaround for them, but that's where we met. And we worked there um, for about a year and a half. And then I left Chicago and moved out to LA and then got a job at Mommy's Own where Wolfgang Puck was a chef. So you and Wolfgang literally were in the kitchen. Were you a sous chef to Wolf? No, 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 no. I was a line cook. You were a line cook. It was I a was job. A line cook. Yeah. And did how did you, you even one get... of those cool bandanas? Yeah, of course. How did you even get into Ma Maison? Well, I had, you know, worked in, I mean, I had gone to culinary school and I worked in a great restaurant. In Where'd you go to culinary school? The CIA in upstate New York. Hyde Park. Yeah, Hyde Park. And and, you know, I worked in a great restaurant up in Brewster and I worked um, when I was at the culinary. I started one of, you know, my part time jobs was at this restaurant that I thought, oh, my God, this is I thought they were crazy. It was two hippies that owned it. But I worked there and I thought they didn't know what they were doing. And of course, then they opened like a year later, the Quilted Giraffe in New York City <laughs> became one of the most well-known restaurants. And I was, you know, the big culinary student thinking like, they you don't were, know what they're you doing. You were basically a punk. Yeah, what you're totally trying to say. <laughs> so you didn't I know what in, you didn't know. <clears throat> right. I worked in, you know, good restaurants. And when I came out to, and, and La Perroquet was very well known at that time. And so when I came to L.A., I was trying to decide, should I work at L'Hermitage, L'Orangerie, Ma Maison, or La Toque? And I went to all of them, and I got hired by Wolf at Ma Maison, which is, I'm so glad that was where I ended up. This is late, late 70s. Yep. yep. Got it. Just before he does Spago. Yeah. Matter of fact, I left after, I don't know how, whether it was maybe a a year at Ma Maison, or maybe a little bit longer. I left to go work. I got a job in the south of France at Loisis, a three-star restaurant there. And a few months later, I had gotten some an email or something. Or, or, I don't know what I got. Maybe not an email. I don't think it was yeah. an email. <laughs> yeah, not an email. I got something and found out Wolf had left to open up Spago. And so he had left and hadn't opened yet, but he had left and was opening up a restaurant and I was in the south of France. So... Well, I was very fortunate because I found that location for him. So that got me started in the restaurant business. Is that right? You found the Spago on Sunset? I, I did find the. That was wow. my very first restaurant real estate deal. And I thought, gosh, you know, nobody's really focusing on restaurant real estate. I'd come out of doing residential brokerage. I was trying to support my acting and producing career. And I didn't know, I didn't want to wait on tables. So mm -hmm. I ended up, you know, finding this uh, commercial property. I didn't know anything about Wolf. I didn't know about Ma Maison. I couldn't afford to go there. I was right. a starving actor trying to make a, a living in LA. And, uh, I stumbled across uh, this joint. It was literally a Armenian restaurant with a fabulous view. And uh, 
Wow. I put the deal together and from there it just it the rest is history. Launch me. Yeah, no. Wow. Incredible. It was That's a great amazing. I didn't know that. And I've yeah. known you for a long time. No, we have known each other for a long time. I haven't known Liz as long as I've known you, no. but I'm curious about Liz, even though I know, you know, the two of you want to talk about this project, certainly. But Liz, how did you get involved in Susan's sphere? Did you know anything about Susan and cooking and any of that? Were you even involved? Because you were involved in the music world, right? Yes. Film it. Well, music first. M music, okay. music. And, music. And from the time, yeah. how how young, Liz, did you start? I, I started singing in a big band when I was 15 in Detroit. Oh, my God. I Where? know. <laughs> Where in Detroit? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, what, what kind of music? All big band, you know, classic jazz, you know. Yeah, that's what music in your amazing body. singer, an amazing singer and songwriter. Holy that's Lord. how I fell in love. Oh All God. right, cool. So well, when I stopped doing that, that was the end. But did so. you see her perform? Is that what happened? You I saw think, her perform? You've seen me perform, but I was way past performing when I met Susan because yeah. I had transitioned out of uh, music and into screenwriting and directing when I when I met Susan, by the time so, I met Susan. You met in LA? Yeah. Got yeah. it, got yeah. it. All right. Well, you you certainly both had storied careers and divergent careers, but in a certain way, now they've intersected because, you know, again, you're life partners. But more than that, you you really are developing uh, a new life at this point mm -hmm. together through this project. So tell me about the project, really. Well, you know, first, what, yeah. First, go. let me say that go. you know through all this to, when we've been together, Liz as a creative mind, of course, is amazing. But I think also she's got a really great business mind. So yeah. I think throughout my career, unfortunately, Liz has had to always be that sounding board of input and thoughts. And, you know, it's very unusual, I think, to have that kind of creative mind with the great business mind. And she does. I so love, I love how you say it. Unfortunately, Liz has had to. And for me, it's like, wait, someone cares about my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> of does course, Liz, I'll tell you what I think. <laughs> does Liz ever go into Susan's menu creations? and No, concepts? no, Stay absolutely. Out of that? No, absolutely not. I sometimes do. And I say, why did it's you do that wrong. one? It's and always... why did, this is too salty. <laughs> so you're the official <laughs> taster. Yeah, no. Yeah. Oh, what yeah. do you mean? Like, like, why is that on the menu? Is that what you mean? Yeah. And also yeah. even a direction that, you know, she might be going, you know, again, you've been together, what, 27 years? Yeah. So you've but seen a lot of restaurants. Understand. I'm not a foodie. You're not. Not at all. No. I'm the anti-foodie. I'm the embarrassing. <laughs> I don't, it's not that I don't care about food. I, I'm not a cook. I'm not interested in cooking. I think cooking is work. It's not fun to me. Yeah, Liz will come into the kitchen when I'm home and say like, oh, can I help? Can I help you with anything? So then I'll give her like green beans to clean. And she after gives, like- That's the worst job on the minutes, planet. It's like, okay, I'm bored with this job. Yeah, can because I do it is. Yeah, she gives me the crap job. No, I go, can I help? And she gives me like, you know what? Cutting those ends off beans. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. That's tedious. I don't want that. Yeah, I want something exciting like- like, like what? Like peeling that's how, Su that's how Susan got her start at Mama is on. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to be yeah. her. I don't want to be that. I like the boring jobs. Well, I, I love to. I love beans. the boring jobs. Well, it can be mindless, and I'm sure Liz has a bit of an active mind, so that's maybe what you know the problem is there. Thank Whatever you. the excuse, that's is. one way to put no, it. A bit of an active. Mind. When we first got together, <laughs> I had to really, I had to be in therapy to discuss why she didn't eat garlic or pork or <laughs> shellfish. It's like, oh. God. Okay, and I think this is the wrong person for I me. I hope you're okay. over it by now. Okay, I will say this though. Um, okay, what? I, I just want to say I wasn't the reason Susan went to therapy. She was already in therapy. Oh, oh, oh. This oh. was just a topic. Yeah, but it took over. It took was over. a topic. It was for like, that I don't day. know how we can be to stay together. I don't. I'm know. not charging for today's session. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually didn't. Well, at one point we were on the phone, and she said, "I said I don't cook," and she didn't believe me. And so then I said, well, she goes, well, you use spices. You make your dinner. And I said, well, I don't really use spices. Yeah. And she goes, well, you use salt. I said, no. And she goes, oi. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, wait a second. I want to go back to the beginning of all this, you know, relationship yeah. stuff because it has to do with where Susan was in her career in the restaurants. Because was City happening? What was happening at the time that you guys met? Which restaurant concept? I think City was closing. It was, it was closing. Which I loved. I thought City <laughs> Restaurant was fantastic. It brought in all these global influences it was in a huge well it started out a city cafe right at uh, on cafe melrose. melrose yeah like a little tables. tiny tiny spot that yeah. subsequently became the border grill cafe the grill, yeah right yeah so city cafe then moves to la brea was the first of its kind of a big box other than maybe the hard rock was going on about that time yeah but ostensibly uh you opened up this big ass restaurant with a tandoori oven and a real tandoori oven from real India, tandoori, in India. Yeah. Tandoori. Well, you don't mess around. You're authentic. Yeah. yeah. In every yeah. way. It was, it was, that was a great, I love that tandoori restaurant. We, Mary Sue and I fired it ourselves <laughs> with, uh, you know, it was just a raw clay pot and you had to glaze it internally. And so we, so we went through the whole glazing process like nine hours at 900 degrees with brown sugar and mustard oil too. Who taught you all this? We read it. We read it in internet. a book. Yeah. <laughs> that in therapy? In book. Yeah. <laughs> and we bought it from a guy who owned the, an Indian hotel in downtown LA. And we brought it back in a pickup truck. I was in the back of the truck holding it so that it wouldn't break when you went over a bump in the street. I'm Wilshire or this Olympic is, or whatever. This is really old ways of doing things. Yeah, know? it was yeah, very it, The it was oldest very, are the very, best. Aren't, aren't the oldest, very, right? There's yeah. a certain history to food that still stays with us, correct? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, City opens up and how did that inspiration even come to you in, in, on Melrose when you first did the cafe? Right. Well, be, well, because all of our training, both of us had trained in French kitchens. I French. took my first trip to India. Uh -huh. I'd only worked in French restaurants, took my first trip to India, and then um, came back and we started to put a couple Indian dishes on the menu. So it would be things like cassoulet and pot au feu, and then, you know, potato budgia and, you know, uh, an eggplant spinach curry. And then Mary Sue went on a trip and worked in the kitchen, like I had worked in the kitchen in India at the ashram. She went and worked in the kitchen in India because her or in Thailand because her uncle was working over there. And so she came back and we put on like the Thai melon salad or you know something like that, a red curry. So all of a sudden our menu started to be from cities around the world. So then we decided, oh, let's open up a restaurant, have it be food from around the world. And that caught on. It did. Well, we were there for a while. Well, um, yeah. That but I mean, you you took years. it from this little tiny joint into a much larger, five thousand square warehouse. foot, you know, big boat truss, wonderful gallery type spot. Yeah. And I thought the people were like the food. Is it, it was just so great to look at the people as well as the food looked great. It, yeah, it was a wonderful experience. Yeah, it was great, great people. It was a great mix of people that came in. We wanted a restaurant that our friends who didn't have any money could afford to go to. Right. Was well, it? I was a starving. Yeah, compared to some, compared to some. So it was very mixed. It was very, there were, you know, very movie star driven, um, artist driven, you know, writers. It was a, a really great mix of people. Very like, eclectic. Yeah. Just like the menu. Yeah. So Liz, were you involved at, at that time with each other or not? No, no. no. Okay, no. so I you're just City doing your music. City was, City was closing and Board of Grill was going. And actually I was living in Santa Monica and Board of Grill was in Santa Monica. So that, you know. You stumbled into Board of Grill, had a margarita. And, and, <laughs> and the rest is, we say. Uh, yeah, so no, I was not part of City is, is the okay so yeah. but you, you but you got to know each other actually when the border yeah. grill was yeah. in its infancy yeah. when that because no, the border grill it had been well, there for not quite that a while, while though right because had it been around some been but around. not for that many years because we've been together 27 years so how long ago did it close i don't know like three five years ago yeah. maybe but yeah, it's still operating it's still operating at the mandalay bay hotel 
right? Very and at the successful. Airport, LAX and and you've had food trucks and the Border Grill is a real big Border brand. Border Grill food trucks and Border Grill catering that's still going on. Still happening. Yep. All right. Well, listen, we're going to take a break because Dr. D is telling me, you know, it's time. But when we come back, we're going to look at the sizzle reel for Susan Feniger dot fork. Do we call it Susan Feniger dot fork? No, we don't. We don't. We don't actually say there's a period in the sentence. We don't. Period. Okay. No, we just so how would you say Feniger. Susan Feniger forked? How'd you come up with that title? Well, I wanted to say the other word, but it wasn't wasn't really allowed. <laughs> well, I, forked is well I could say you could say it here, but I don't know about FC, FTC rules. I don't want to upset do we, Dr. D. We do we could we say no, we're not going to do it. We're no. going to do things. It's no. a family show, you, you know. So yeah. you wanted to say that because she was forked, forked over <laughs> in things a way. Didn't go. Let's put it this way. Things didn't go as planned. Well, we're going to find out more about that after we break. Okay. We're going to come back. And thank you really so much. This is great to be with you both. You're, you're fabulous. Both Aww. of you. Thank you. I'm hugging you. You're fabulous. You're fabulous. No, you're fabulous. Oh, okay. Bye-bye. We'll be right back with right. Mr. Restaurant. I'm Will Knox. See you in a bit. Are you clear? So, what was I do? Ladies? Yes. Are we okay? Uh, gentlemen. Sure. Yeah. Oh, this is going great for me. I don't know how it is for you. Would you like me to go ahead and start the next with the sizzle rope, and then you come in with opening up the program? No, I think what I'll do is I'll intro. Okay. I'll I'll say hello back, and then we'll intro the sizzle. Oh, no. You know. All right. I'm ready? Here we go. We're going to do it in three minute, three seconds. Three. Like look counting down right now. Okay. Three, two, one. You're alive. Welcome back. We're with Susan Feniger and Liz Lachman, and we're discussing right now Susan Feniger Fort, which is a verite documentary that's a work in progress. Mm -hmm. And we're going to learn a lot more about this work in progress after we see the wonderful sizzle reel that Liz Lachman has put together as the filmmaker of this project. Susan Feniger Fork. We'll be back after about four minutes. I'm sure I'm pronouncing everything wrong. I have no concept of the language itself. Oh, here's my third Vietnamese coffee. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. <laughs> I'm learning. Come on. 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 I can cook though. A very successful team of Susan Feniger and Mary Sue Milligan. And maybe we shouldn't have had that last mojito. loved eating on the street. It's where I think is the most inspired part of a culture. It's where I think the food is the most creative. Whether it's in India, <laughs> Thailand, or Mexico, or the United States, there's an interaction there that you just don't get in restaurants. It's real people that are bringing something that's very dear to them, and you get to share in that. And usually it's the most incredible food. It's the heart and soul of the culture exactly what I love. Why don't we have these in LA? That's what I want to know. Thinking about opening this restaurant street was so natural because people that are serving off street carts, off of the taco trucks, they're serving food that their grandmother or mothers, their ancestors made. It's so much about the heart and soul and it's the most inspired food. It's really 
just a matter of figuring out what chairs, what tables, what silverware, glassware. Yeah, that works. You have to think about every single detail. Wow, they sent so many. So I'm trying to look at tabletops. See this? This means that your friend is closer to you. Come on, Cleo, get down. We walked into it that first time. I thought, oh my God, how did this place ever get an A? It was Look. so disgusting. This is such a dump. So now the zoning administrators won't sign off on it, but that means we don't get final permit for at least a month. I want it to be done in three and a half months. <laughs> Cook the brisket, thousand island dressing, make chicken stock, make the preserved lemon. We've got like two months. We need to get the menu done. I mean, the menu's what I said was going to be the easiest. Now I'm panicked because we haven't like gotten it. Is that the correct? Look, look, look. One of the best things about <laughs> opening this new restaurant is to even be spending this time back in the kitchen. I'm hoping we find a fudge that we really like because we made eight batches of it yesterday. That isn't it. about half done of what we think we're gonna get done every day. Every time anything takes longer than you think, it just costs so much money. There's so much damage that we have to have the structure. Termites and water run. We're paying rent for the last year on the ground here because everything else has got to come down. I've gone through feeling elated and excited and inspired and then freaked out and panicked and scared. And the crowd goes wild. Well, I'm <laughs> wild for that because I had chills at the end of it. And it wasn't just the music, which was stellar, but it was a visual treat. I wanted to eat the food. It's it's incredible. And I thank you for letting us even in on this four minute piece because I want to see the whole deal. When can I see the whole deal? Me too. <laughs> Me too. We're editing right now. We're in editing. We meaning I and the editor. Yeah, not, not me. Not Susan. We don't let, just as I don't go in the kitchen, she doesn't come in and, and tell so me. So she doesn't Although, suggest a cut here or there? No. Oh my God. Liz I would is, kill her. Liz she is, would not be alive right now. Liz she is doesn't. editing with the editor in London. <laughs> and so every morning she's up at 4.30 in the morning and they start editing for the next five hours or so. And then I get up and when I go in to make a coffee, I hear my name. I'll be like, what, what, what are you talking about? I'm talking about you, baby. <laughs> Nobody but better, I, I guess, in that house. I have a question. Yes. What is off of the subject? This is season two, episode four. You well, wait till episode four to have us on? Well, it, it took, Susan's very busy, and so are you, because you're both award winners. Oh, wait. You're hard to get. He's putting it on us. He's putting it on us. Well, uh, what happened? You know. You're on now. Oh, look at, she's so good. Miss, she's Miss Sunshine. You're on now. Be happy. Well, maybe we'll, <laughs> when, when we do the book, yeah. Mr. Restaurant, maybe we'll move this to the front and make this the I'm first chapter, about. because yeah. I'm okay. with. Wait, why not the cover? <laughs> Well, oh, you're brazen. Susan, I, I see I see what you see in her. I really do. Yeah. You know? Do you? Huh? I do. Well, let's talk after. Well, you know, I'm <laughs> married. To give me away. <laughs> I'm married. I can't go there. Uh, Gosh. All right. I'm getting the high sign again from Dr. D after that wonderful interlude we had with the sizzle. We're going to come back and talk a lot about how this whole project came to be and what's going on with the project and a little bit more about Susan and Liz and, you know, just in. Uh, or Liz and Susan. Liz and Susan. It's the <laughs> dynamic duo. And I'm really happy to have them with me on Mr. Restaurant today from the beautiful studios of KZSB AM 1290 FM 96.9. We're in the grotto with Will Knox and Mr. Restaurant. We'll be right back. Right, we're clear on that and segment. We're gonna come back now shortly. 
Do we have two? Do we have two more breaks? We have uh, one more break. We have how much more time overall? We have thirty minutes. Oh wow! Yeah. Can you guys handle it? Thirty more minutes. We can handle yeah. it. Because I I think you could just be going on for a while, which is great for me. It helps. <laughs> it helps me. Yeah, we never shut up. No, I love that. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're gonna skip around a little bit That's here, there. Right. Okay, so in three, two. One, you're live. I'm live. I'm back with Liz Lockman and Susan Feniger. Liz got top billing. Susan. I noticed it. Okay. I gave her top billing. I, because did, have to, I did have to nudge you a little. Good Will, work, Will. You got there. Good work. This is her project, is it not? <laughs> it is. And how did that come to be, really? Well, when when did you get the inspiration you wanted to do a verite documentary? You know, I had the footage. What happened is I, when I said somebody should record this, I borrowed a camera and I became the cinematographer because we did have, I did hire for one day a cinematographer and it was ridiculously expensive. And there's no way he was gonna be there when things were really happening. So I just thought this is ridiculous. He or him. she. Well, it, the, it happened or. to be a guy. Okay. This, in this case happened to be a guy. And I thought, I can't just call him and say, quick, Susan's doing something cute. Susan, stop right there, freeze. So that wasn't gonna work. So I, I did it. I, and you'll, as the editor now, I'm, I'm regretting that I did, that I was the cinema. She, she learned, she borrowed our friend's camera and learned how to do it because that's not what she did. So Liz was constantly walking around with the camera in the house. I, I basically shot Susan everywhere and everything she did and recipe testing with, with Sasha in our kitchen and architect meetings and menu design meetings and um, going to the site and wrestling with, you know, whatever was going wrong there, which was pretty much everything. And, uh, you know, that I got it all. So for a year and a half, and then we went to Vietnam and I shot Susan there and I hired a crew there because I thought if I screw it up, I can't go back and fix this. So I hired a crew and I shot. So we had Did you have an interpreter? Yeah. Was it, was yeah. it a lo local Vietnamese crew, right? Yeah. And we went, yes. And we, everywhere when we traveled, and then we went to um, Shanghai. Shanghai. Yeah. And also in Singapore and each place we hired, because Susan wants to eat where most people don't want to go for a vacation. <laughs> the best food. So most people get sick when they go to these countries and eat, you know, like- That's how you immerse like, yourself in the culture. Right, yeah. you get a worm, that's how you do it. That's the best the meal I ever had in my life, I was in Tunisia and I was on uh, an excursion in the desert by camel. And we were three days by camel. Wow. And, and they took us up to this cave in the mountains and we walk into the cave, it was lunch. We walk into the cave and at the end of the cave, which was all of like maybe 150 feet deep, right, was a camel lying down like a dog yeah. in the cave. And this is where we we're going to have lunch in Tunisia. Next to the camel? <laughs> the camel was like the pet of the guy that owned the Oh restaurant. my gosh. Wow. It was the greatest experience of my life. And I said, I am not in L.A. anymore. <laughs> yeah, in case you needed reminder. This is this is, is really far away. Is riding a camel comfortable? Because for that many hours, it doesn't sound comfortable. You do side saddle, you oh. know. You don't always, you know, go, you know, two legs over the the hump. And, well, I mean, you got a, a saddle. You you're got humping a, a lot, though. Sure. I'll tell you that you're definitely what? humping a lot. You're, yeah, you definitely. So I was on a horse in Mongolia for nine hours. That wasn't fun. Oh yes, that was a trip that you and Susan took, right? Well, kind of. Kind of? I didn't. Oh, she you took didn't. the trip in my mind. <laughs> okay, well, that would be a therapy question. I'm not going there. Because yeah. I, was cur I was cursing her the entire time. So she kind of was there. I was cursing her for pulling out at the last minute on this trip. And I, thought I had to. She had to, but I thought if I don't go, I'm going to be mad at myself forever. And I'm probably going to take it out on Susan forever. It probably would have been better had I gone. It would have been so much. Better. I mean, the trip would have been better. I would have had more fun. And yeah. the end result yeah. of staying would have been better. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. So that I'm um, just, when you said a camel for three days, that's what it reminded me of, you know, which sounds so romantic, but then you do it and it's maybe well, not as romantic. 
everything's a little bit more romantic until you really do it but i'm in yeah, a great that romance. Was more i've romantic. been in a great romance for 36 years with my wife and so you guys are in a great romance too oh, and yeah. and we're all into immersion and you have immersed yourself certainly in food and your culture yeah. and your f- filmmaking your music all of it you guys are very deep you're not superficial you go deep And I think that's what sets you apart. We're going to get into this a little bit more. Dr. D, do we have to take a break? No, we don't have to take a break. Oh, great. So we can continue. When when Liz and I first got together, we'd be in the car and listening to the radio or something or talking. And Liz would stop and sort of say, wait, hold on, hold on. I have to, I just thought of this line that I want to leave (laughs) on my message machine at home for a, a song. So she'd call her her home phone and leave this these few words on it, and then like two weeks later, she'd come home, and there would be the beginnings of a song that her and two her weeks. writings. A week, <laughs> whatever. A week later, this the is beginnings like ancient of history. Oh, it was I'm, so amazing. I'm sleeping right now. Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, really. You, you both are creative. That that's the essence of it all. And ostensibly, I think when you, Liz, saw what Susan was going through with this yeah. street yeah. Uh, foray, uh, it was going sideways and you thought somebody's got to cover this. Well, right. it was before it went sideways. Yeah, exactly. okay. I thought it was going to be great. And to, I to chronicle the development of a restaurant. Exactly. And especially with someone who's this is the first time she's done it by herself. It, all new things are coming up. And so I did follow and all, you know, all the trips and the street food tasting and, and sort of throughout the build out of the restaurant and everything. And basically, um, you know, it didn't turn out the way Susan planned. And one of my friends said, well, what are you going to do now? And I said, well, what do you mean? It's, it's a tragedy. It just changes what the film becomes the unexpected ending, you know? Um, So it's fine. It's all film. It's all storytelling. You know, I, I thought it was going to be a happier ending. That's all. Well, but it was it, a happy beginning and middle. <laughs> for sure. It was yeah. fabulous. A, a wonderful ride. Well, when did you know it was going to go kind of south? I mean, what what indicated Never. did you go? <laughs> In construction, did you think it was? A oh, no, 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 no. There were that's, all, that's normal. You're going to get troubles along the way it's the yeah. restaurant business yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. like the film business right i mean the real estate business is the same you 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 come up with an idea right. you put a team together you got to raise the money you got to find the project obviously at the I'm get- getting stressed out right now will <laughs> say that again You're stressing me out oh no 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 <laughs> but at the end of the day you know, you launch and you launch with a great team and you've got a great team right now, right? You, that you've, tell us about that team. That you've Are you talking got. about the film team? Yes. Okay, so Lisa Don Malreve is the producer and she um, just finished a, a wonderful dance documentary. It's called Uprooted, The Journey of Jazz Dance. That is now on HBO Max and I advise everyone to see it. It is phenomenal. Yeah. And the editor for that is Joan Gill Amram. And that became the editor for Forked because um, first of all, uh, I was always, I was looking for editors and for some weird reason, I was always um, interviewing editors who had cut dance films, which I think is very odd. Why? Well, I, I, I didn't know why, but I think I've put it together now. I think because this film for me, has a rhythm. Syncopation. It's some kind of rhythmic thing that I feel when I envision the film. And so I wanted someone who could cut dance. I don't, it wasn't a conscious Mm. effort. It wasn't a conscious thing. I just noticed it after three different people. And I thought, oh, that's weird. And Joan cut uprooted. And when I saw her work and I spoke with her, I was sold. She's fantastic. And um, so we're now working together and she's doing a great job. And I get up, like Susan said, very early and we work it, we're working the film out. We're, should be done in the fall. That's what we're hoping. And, and Miriam, yeah. uh, Miriam Cutler is the composer. Miriam Cutler is a very well-known doc 
uh, composer. She did um, RGB. She did The Hunting Grounds. She did Man. Man is this the music that we heard on the sizzle reel? No, no, no that is not the music. But Got she it. will be doing uh, the music for this film. And she's all over um, the world. She's teaching and, and uh, she loves this film. So very excited about that. So that's going to happen soon. So you've got a tight team and, and you've raised a lot of your money to get this thing done, which is, of course, always the struggle in the restaurant business. How do I get to the finish line? And oftentimes, Susan, did you have all the money when you started Street? No. What <laughs> I happened didn't there? How, I didn't even know how we were going to raise the money. And Liz was like, you'll do it. Just you people do it. Just go out, reach, ask for it. It'll happen. And I was like, I don't know. I don't even see how, I don't even know who I'd ask or how to do it. And Liz was like, do it, do it. Well, Just actually, I remember there were like four or five different people who I overheard saying to Susan, if you ever do another restaurant, I want to be involved. I'm, I'm Always, you hear that all the time. But then I know, but I thought so. Step up, up, you know. Yeah. yeah. So I thought, well, they've offered, see if it's real. And some of them were. So that's yeah. cool. So that is what yeah. happened you finally got over the finish line with with those friends except and family the except yeah. the remember the the price tag kept going up yeah. every time they dig up something in the and find yeah. another problem that had to be rebuilt it was like now yeah. we got to raise more money it was yeah, crazy that, that location hadn't nothing had been done to that building in years. 40 years it was, i mean basically we ripped the whole restaurant down and this building was north of uh, melrose yeah. on highland where you could not stop your car between four and seven yeah yeah and probably that not perfect location yeah probably not the best <laughs> best of locations you know but i tend well, to I like do remember you better. saying to me once you, you said gosh will nancy silverton is down the street on the corner doing pizzeria moza and she's killing it what's wrong with me and I said, I don't think it's anything wrong with you. It may be just 500 yards difference. It just may be yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. sometimes and in real it's, estate. You know, it's not Italian. It's not pizza. You know, I mean, who, who knows exactly what I, I, you know, I never learned from my mistakes. <laughs> don't she? She looks at me when she says that. I, I never learned from my mistakes. Do it again. You're doomed to do it again. <laughs> I'm getting the high sign from Dr. D that we have two minutes on this segment, but we're going to come back after that, right, Doc? We have yeah. we have more time to talk. So, it, it, when when you were raising money for your venture, Susan, that was a struggle, and now we've got Liz finishing her project about you and your struggle. And you know, you're I not call raise all a, the money. But. I would not call this a struggle. I would no, say that it's a labor it's of love, in, right? In process. It's a process. Because, yeah, we have gotten um, a number of investors, which has been phenomenal. And we've yeah. also got a fiscal sponsorship from Film Independent, which means that anyone who donates to the film, they get a 100% tax deduction on their donation. Oh. So, right. So that's pretty cool. And so, you know, it's just about getting that word out and finding people who are wanting to be a part of this, you know? And how do you get the word out? How would someone contact you if if, if I was an interested investor or I was an interested sponsor, yeah. which, you know, I'd love to have Mr. Restaurant sponsor you for sure, but we'll get to that later. Okay, good. How, how would one reach you? Well, we have a website, which is forkedthefilm.com. Forked the, the film. Film. Yeah. com. Yeah. And okay. that and that has all the information and the contact. And you know, the producer can be contacted directly if somebody actually wants to be an investor, which is a little different than a donation. And uh, you can also find the information about film independent about that fiscal sponsor donation is on that site as well. It's got everything, it's got great pictures. Pictures say <laughs> a thousand words right right yeah i'd love to taste the food see that that's that's mm -hmm. where it comes out in the sizzle reel i wanted to taste all that food yeah. it's just yeah. great mm -hmm. you know so yeah. it's it's a sensual experience and certainly being with the two of you i gotta tell you i don't want to get into you know it's you know what whatever that's but you guys are really very <laughs> sensual you you your your hearing your your nose your voice <laughs> Your eyes, Female power. 
Okay, there we go. You know, no, it's it's really you're you're very sensual people. That's all I can tell you. You know, so I love I being with we you. We are really we are really heading into territory that no. is not going to be okay. Mr. Really. Restaurant covers a lot of different. I see. You know, uh -huh. It all comes back to the food, baby. We'll be right back with Mr. Restaurant. I'm Will Knox, and we're with Susan Feniger and Liza Lockman. Liza Lockman. I love this. I'm going to have to, huh? I'm, someone's going to get murdered at the end. Liz Lockman. <laughs> we're with Liz, I might we're just with, kill myself. <laughs> we're with Liz Lockman and Susan Feniger, and we're going to talk more about the project Susan Feniger Forked. We'll be right back. Very good. All right. Let's do one last segment here. You I'm having fun. What can I tell you? I heard Dr. D laughing. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. That's good stuff. Good stuff. I think when my, when my female empowerment yeah. figure came oh, in. Yes. I yes. love that. I, I hope I'm not being too bold. No, no. Oh, you're, no, you're good. Just fine. Okay. You're just fine. Right. Now right. with him, fine is okay. You see? I will, uh, I will not send this program to your wife. Yeah, you okay. can. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what do we have? Do we have two minutes to close? Oh, you've got more than that. You've what do we have? Nine minutes. We have you've nine minutes. More, so yeah, I may that. have you walk me through the procedure of, okay, treat me like an investor. Sell uh, me on this, blah, right. blah, blah. Uh -oh. All right. Okay. Three, You're okay. two, one, you're live. We're back. I'm Will Knox, and this is Mr. Restaurant. We're with Liz Lockman, Susan Feniger, Susan Feniger, and Liz Lockman, the dynamic <laughs> duo. I got to tell you, you you deserve equal billing, both Aww. of you. You really Aww. do. You know. Thanks, Will. I've I've gotten to know Susan certainly over the years, and I'm recently getting to know Liz. And you know, you both tremendous people, and you're great artisans. You're both creative in your own way, and we've been talking a lot about this new documentary that uh, Liz has been putting together about the experience of street restaurant. What happened with the development of street restaurant? And I, for my own business, am a restaurant real estate and concept development guy. So development is a big deal, you know, to me. So Susan, the arc of the development with street, it, it goes you know, on a trajectory and here we are and we're opening and there's high hopes and there always is with restaurants and certainly with film and anything creative, you know, you want people to embrace it. So what happened? What, when did it start to get funky? Well, I think, you know, we, we started with just open for dinner and then we, you know, I, I think I'd, Mary Sue and I had always had restaurants that were open for lunch and dinner. So we, you know, we decided we'd open for lunch, which I don't know that that was the smartest decision. Because there's no business there. around there, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. Right. And, you know, then it just adds to labor cost and blah, blah, blah. And, um, but I, you know, my memories of it are all really great, you know, till it wasn't. I mean, so it's we were busy. It's the drugs. Yeah. <laughs> the you know, it felt like the mojitos. <laughs> you know, I worked really, we, we worked really long hours. You know, Sasha and I worked, you know, long, long hours from early in the morning. But that's who you morning. are. You work. Yeah. yeah. It was a tiny kitchen and we'd work like, you know, 15 hour days. And I'd get home. Like I remember driving down Wilshire, it'd be like, you know, one in the morning and I'd be back there at 7 a.m. And, you know, and I just, I think it, um, you know, it just felt like it was busy on the weekends, but not busy, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but it would be busy Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So you sort of don't see how challenging it is until you really are like realizing, like, we're just not making it. And, you know, we looked at, obviously always looked at P&Ls and looked at bottom line and where we were but you know at some point just got like this is just not going down a good path and so that we don't end up in a really negative place let's maybe we need to reconceptualize which is what we did you know and we reconceptualized it and made it a little bit more accessible and neighborhood like and you know I, I don't still really know maybe it was a little bit ahead of its time um but at some point it got to a place where I think we felt like, I felt like, you know, we wanna be able to pay our staff, we wanna be able to pay our bills, so we should close the doors. 
I actually remember when you said to me, you know, I'm working for free and it's taking me away from my other restaurant, which is where we are making money. Yeah. So it doesn't make sense. All this energy is going to try to keep this thing going. We're making no money out of it and it's not working, but it is taking me away from the other thing that deserves to be worked. Well, you made a smart business decision at the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, it was, you know, for me, it was fun all the way up to even the closing night was fun and, you know, sad, but, so but it was, again, it's the drugs. <laughs> it's her personality. You know, a, it's got to be her personality, Liz. Right. So cause, what was it like watching this? You know, you're, you're well, it was very frustrating. Your partner's sad. In, I know she, drugs, was, I felt yeah. like, you know, I wasn't sure how connected she was to the negative aspects of this you know because susan well i mean here's the thing for me i'm like okay we got to keep treading water we get, we don't want to go under we we meaning susan i don't want susan going under because i can't tolerate that she can't tolerate that you know so some of this was just talking with her about everything you know when she'd come home well that's after star trek voyager was over and, and, then, ther and therapy earlier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when when Captain Janeway was done, you know, then I could put my attention on Susan. And um, <laughs> and so. <laughs> Idiot. Sorry. sorry. Yeah. But it's true. So, OK, whatever. It's but whatever. For, it's time for another mojito, I think. Um, but, you know, just trying to to help her process it, you know, because there's plenty of time afterwards to deal with the 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 after life of these things but during it is when we can't allow someone you know she needed her energy during that time we can't be going oh this but is the so film scary. is really about uh reinvention and resilience and it's yeah. hopeful right i mean well, the film, it, it ends hopefully right it, yes because the truth is everyone fails and so the the real um the real uh question in life is how one fails, not if they fail. Everyone will fail. Do you get back up? That's the measure of success is how you treat a failure in your life, you know? And so that's really what this film became was how does Susan Feniger do this when she fails, which no one really would expect uh, given her circumstances and given the way that I'm structuring the film, we all know that Susan Feniger will be fine and she comes out on top. And so when she doesn't, it's gonna be like a knife to the heart. But I won't leave the audience with a knife in their hearts, I promise. Well, I think people like to be uplifted at the end of the yeah. day. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's a great story to be able to transmit. And if I was an investor, would that be something you'd try to sell me on? Well, yes. There's one other aspect to this film that I think we haven't seen before. And that is that I have access to things that no one will ever see Susan doing. Like dancing with a dog? in her pajamas where right? is the dog is the dog here today no the dog she left, left. Okay, she dog, left. All right. dog, dog <laughs> had enough yeah she's on so, the couch one of them's on the couch so yeah. so really it's like you know i mean i was cutting something yesterday with the editor and susan's got her she's talking to a uh, to an investor she's got her feet up on the desk barefoot in her shorts and t-shirt talking all about what's going to happen with street and how great the menu is going to be and, you know, and I have this picture of her feet just with her toes twitting. I'm like, shot. no one is going to have this footage but Liz. Can I have this the still of that? <laughs> yes, you may. Su but Susan Feniger, as no one has ever seen her. Feniger's feet. Yeah, Feniger's feet. <laughs> F-E-A-T. Hey, maybe we should like sell those and raise more money for street. Oh, my God. I, you know, wanna do I don't know. I'm looking, always looking for an angle for you guys. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll put it out there on um, with Bitcoin. But you still need an angle. I mean, you still need to raise more money. I and mean, that's yes, always the struggle to we get. Need to the a little more. Line. We need a little more. And your budget. I have an idea. Yeah. But we could because since Liz has been working on this, I've been going through our street cookbook that we did during this oh. time. I mean, we had a number of years. We had Great. like five years of it. So yeah. it wasn't like it opened to close. Yeah. But, you know. Um, I've been going through the book and like looking at it, like that recipe was great. And I said to Liz this morning, I'm going to, I think I'm going to start cooking from the cookbook. So maybe we should say to investors, okay, if you invest, we'll do in our driveway here, which I've been dying to do a, a dinner, dinner, an investor's dinner. 
Oh, that be... coconut curried mussels, anyone? Yeah. Those go big time at these that's auctions, don't they? Yeah. Hey, yeah. That, that's a great idea. And yeah. what about is the street cookbook out? Yeah, of course. That's published, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. and it's a great book, and we filmed it all here. It's called Susan Feniger's Street Cookbook. And we cooked it all here, and the woman who did the photography, yeah, photography for it was great. And Can I get that online at Amazon? Where could I, don't I get know where you? I don't know where you can buy that, it through the That restaurant. is a cookbook sure. I'd like to have. That's it's a great yeah, book. Yeah, Maybe book. we'll get you one. No, I just want the pictures we'll of the feet. <laughs> Yeah, something wrong with him. Something really yeah, wrong with yeah. him. I don't know. You know, it keeps going to this weird, creepy place. Will it's my deal. It's because Doctor D's given me the high sign. I'm now, do we have like one more minute and the show's over, or yep. oh, the show's over in a minute? What? Come on, we gotta no. come back. We gotta come back. I hope so. I hope so because there, there's a lot more questions I want to ask you. Just yeah. as we continue, what yeah. Susan? advice would you give to someone who is starting a restaurant and has this don't. what would you do? <laughs> don't <laughs> don't okay. well right now i might say that but you know if it's your passion i mean the thing that's really fabulous about it is that you know after all these years i still love being in the restaurant business it's still you know i love it there's things i used to hate about it like meetings and i still do but beyond that it's a fantastic career, but but right now is a challenging time in the restaurant world. Uh, sure. In the world, in the world. Yeah. I would say this: time. you have to have passion, yeah, for right? it to be to be in that job. And I I think that's uh, an intangible, actually. Right. Passion. Mm -hmm. What about you, Liz? What kind of advice would you give to a a fledgling filmmaker? Same thing: you have to have passion because you're going to yeah. have a lot of no's and a lot of things that don't work. And if you don't have passion for it, then you'll just go do something else, which is also fine. But, you know, if you want to stick, stick with it, you, you have to have a passion for it. So well, I think if you're, basically, if you're yeah. creative, like you two are, you, there's just no stopping. I don't know. Really? I've seen you on a, in a film, Will, and that was pretty, pretty cool. Now, 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 now. It was pretty cool, Will. We may show that one day. Too much oregano. See with that? Will. No, it was just yeah. between, between us. Also I new, did not see it. Uh, yes, it, invited. it won the Cannes Film Festival, Best Short Film. I played a Greek chef. Wow, that's right. 1981. I couldn't get arrested. I still had to sell real estate, and that's why I found Spago. So I, will, I would I would arrest you for what I saw. <laughs> Can I move in with you guys? <laughs> yeah, we need a houseboy. <laughs> I have a foot fetish. Listen, thank you so much for this. This is fantastic. I'm with Ms restaurateur Susan Feniger and her devoted documentarian Liz Lachman and this has been Mr. Restaurant with Will Knox until the next time see you later bye-bye bye, -bye. Yeah. bye, -bye. thanks yeah here's uh the next element my friends yes uh we want to get uh do we not a little uh tag soundbite from the ladies uh, so we can then promote them uh, throughout this uh, uh, this uh, coming uh, year and then some. And then also, uh, Dr. D is going to have, what, three different cuts or three versions? Yeah, it's uh, each one gets uh, successively shorter. The first one's the full version, all, all in. The second one will be edited down to 60 minutes, but we're only talking like by two minutes, because this was an hour and two minutes. I take that back because I don't know how long the music's going to be. So it could be longer. And then the third version for radio, so it fits into automation, will be edited down to 46 minutes. However, I'm not touching the sizzle reel. Okay. That will stay intact. Okay. So what we need from them now is uh, basically you introduce, the two of you can introduce yourselves. You promote whatever you want to promote, the documentary, the restaurant, what have you. And you're listening to Mr. Restaurant with Will Knox. So they end with that. They end with that. All right, ladies. And then ultimately, you can, you can use these three issues on your, you know, launch platforms. And yeah. All, all that How stuff. long do you need the, this thing we're going to uh, You know, 15, 20, 30 seconds at the most. 
I don't want to go too long because these basically will be dropped in uh, going in or out of the program uh, to just let people know, hey, these are the kinds of guests that tell, you got on the program. Tell, Susan tell me what, what again we're saying, what we're again, saying again. She wasn't Sorry. listening. I was right. looking Hi, at it. See what I'm, I have to deal with? Yeah. Go ahead, Will. I'm Susan Feniger. This is my uh, collaborator, blah, blah, blah. No, this I'm one. saying my own name. There you go. Okay, good. Yeah. So I'm, okay. and, and uh, we're, we're talking with Will Knox in, with, on Mr. Restaurant. We're, we're talking about fork, Susan Feniger forked, right? right? Mm -hmm. Is that, because yeah. we want to promote. Promote this. Yeah, I would say promote, promote the documentary. Yeah. Right. So. Uh, and you are listening to Mr. Restaurant with Will Knox. And you are listening to. We can recut this if it's not right. Oh, yeah, Will. I, I, I crank it around and rearrange it and all that kind of stuff. Play it forwards. Play He's it backwards. the master, yeah. they call him. Okay. He is the doctor. <sighs> all right. Well, our job is to make sure you don't have to cut it. That's right. So, are we so just you're going to say your name. Yeah, unless you want it. Is there anything else we should talk about besides the uh, besides promoting the film? Uh, I would say let's stay focused on the film. And okay. certainly, <clears throat> please, uh, when you give I'm um, a restaurateur or what have you, and I'm film documentarian or whatever your title you choose to use as yeah. you introduce yourself. OK, you follow me? Uh huh. OK, it's like I, I introduce myself all the time. Hi. I'm the Oracle, Dr. D. Uh, and nobody believes me, but that's uh, another story for another day. I'm okay. Susan Benegar, chef, raconteur. There you go. And then Liz jumps in and says, well, I'm blah, blah, blah. And we're here <laughs> together to talk about Susan, or we're here yeah. to talk about Susan Feniger. Talked Fork. about the documentary, Susan Feniger. Fork. All right. Yeah. Are the ladies already? Kind the of. problem is Susan's He's, shy to talk. About I herself. know. It's hard to get her out of her shell. All right. <clears throat> so true. True. here we go. Ready? I'll count you down. Okay. Let me get over here. Here we go. You ready, ladies? In three, two, wait a minute. I took that button off. And three, two, one. Hey, I'm Susan Feniger, and I'm a chef and a restaurateur. And I'm Liz Lockman, a filmmaker. And we are going to be talking about our new film, the documentary, Susan Feniger Forked. Ooh, I'm so excited, but ooh, I can't wait for it to come out. So you're listening to Mr. Restauranteur with Will Knox. Sorry, I blew that. Go ahead and just do the uh, tagline. And you're listening to Mr. Restaurant with Will Knox. All right. All right, you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, you're live. You're listening to Mr. Restaurant with Will Knox. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Oh. Very good. Okay, very good. so nice. Very nice. Yeah, yeah, you you oh my gosh. I, I was watching that and I was watching some of the food that was being made and the way it was being done on on open grills and you know that kind that of stuff is amazing reminded me of my grandmother back in florence arizona when she would her husband made for him my grandfather made for her <clears throat> this cast i don't know if it was cast iron but i know it was a a metal um stove outside a big concrete thing with a, a chimney a, a big concrete chimney going up and it was just all covered and she would go out there with the tortillas and she would, no utensils, always used her hands. You know how they do, uh, you know, with the, um, uh, you know, with the, uh, you know, flipping of the uh, tortillas, you know, back like that. Right. And then she put them on the griddle and, and then she would pick it up with her fingers and flip it over. And you know how you know you have a genuine homemade tortilla? It has the little tiny black circles. Be she, careful, that's Dr. How you D. Know. You're talking to the master here. Oh, man. Yeah. Good yeah. stuff. And then tamales that she made, especially around the holidays. I love the assembly line she had in her kitchen. And it was a small kitchen. Yeah. You know, that is what oh. a girl had the women up front in the window hand making all the 